Hey, everybody, thank you for joining us today. We pray that this message reaches you wherever you are at today in whatever situation you are facing. We pray that the Lord ministers to your life. Hang on till the end, and I want to say a couple more things to you before we're done. Um, why don't you go ahead and stand with me this morning? I want to get right into the message today. If you got your Bibles, turn to Matthew chapter 21. And today is Palm Sunday. This is when we celebrate Jesus riding into Jerusalem. And I want to preach to you this morning. I'm thankful we have cowboys at the church that can bring me stuff like this because I don't have this laying around my house. About 9.30 last night, I realized that. So. And uh, I want to talk to you about this topic this morning. Untie my promise. Untie my promise. Matthew 21, verse 1. Are you ready to hear the word of the Lord this morning? Amen. Now when they drew near Jerusalem and came to Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord has need of them. And immediately he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, lowly and sitting on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. So the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. They brought the donkey and the colt, laid their clothes on them, and set him on them. And a very great multitude spread their clothes out on the road. Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then the multitudes who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he had come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? So the multitude said, This is Jesus the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. Father, we just thank you for your word today. Thank you that you are with us. And Father, we do pray for any needs. I know those that are in the hospital right now, Lord, and, and watching online, and those that are, that are sick today that we've already got messages about. Father, I just pray right now that you would go to where they're at and you would heal them and strengthen them. And Father, as we listen to your word today, I just pray, make this word come alive in us. May we leave here today with hope. May we leave here today knowing that you are for us and not against us. Thank you for all that you're doing in us and through us. We ask all these things in the mighty and the holy and the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and by the power of the Holy Ghost. And all God's people together said, Amen. Turn around and high-five some people and say, Jesus loves you and I'm trying, and you may be seated. Today I want to talk to you about part of the triumphal entry story we don't talk about very often. We talk about Jesus riding in, we talk about the palm branches, we talk about the crowds, and we'll get to all that in a moment, but I want to, really the basis of my sermon today is the part we don't normally get to. Jesus needs a donkey. Let me just say this to you, I'm so glad that Jesus used a donkey. I'll get more into this later on. Um, I was going to use the King James word, but my wife told me I would get in trouble if I did that. Some of you know it. You can go read it if you want, but I, I'm going to stay away from that so I don't get in trouble. Let me just say this. I'm so glad that God still uses donkeys. Amen. <laughs> yeah. I'll leave it there. Amen. <laughs> I'm just going to leave it there. Jesus needs a donkey, but the problem is the donkey's tied up. Have you ever felt like what you needed in your life, the, the promise, the blessing you were waiting on, was tied up somewhere? 
This is a promise because it's a prophecy. And Jesus, as the Messiah, fulfills every single prophecy. And we'll read later on from Zechariah himself saying this was going to happen. This is the promise that was told to the Jews saying, your Messiah, your king is coming. And this is how he's going to come. And all these years they had held on to a promise. But to fulfill that, the promise was tied up. Have you ever felt like, God, I believe you told me something and it's going to happen, but it must be tied up somewhere. God, there's a blessing coming my way, but it's tied up somewhere. I know you're going to come through, but it's tied up somewhere, and I've got to figure out how to get to that. And then Jesus does something interesting. He talks to two disciples. We don't know which two disciples. We don't know their names. He doesn't say. We don't know if it was one of the big three, Peter, James, or John, if it was somebody else. He doesn't say to them what their name is but he tells them to do something he says we're in this city I want you to go over there to that little city and you're gonna walk in and you're gonna see a donkey and a colt and I want you to loose them and bring them to me now here's where I have a problem in the story because I am very non-confrontational okay I'm the person that if I go to a restaurant and they say do you have this? And they'll say, I don't think so, but I'll go look. I'll say, don't worry about it. I'll get something else. Like, I don't, I don't, I just, I, I drop things very quickly. My wife laughs at me all the time. I don't like confrontation. I'm just being very honest. I will, I run from that kind of stuff. I try not to. I know as a leader, you're not supposed to. I'm being very transparent right now and telling you I don't like confrontation. And so I can imagine being one of the disciples and going over there. And the whole time I'm going, I am freaking out in my mind because I'm thinking, Jesus, you just asked me to go grab a donkey that's not ours do you realize it looks like stealing and that's one of the t big ten you gave us like this isn't our donkey and all I'm supposed to do is just go grab him and bring him to you and you know thankfully they don't have guns yet but what if they hit me with a rock or something like, what if I can't get away I mean like you want me to go over to somebody else's house and grab the donkey that's not ours and go and Jesus said just go and grab the donkey and loose it and bring it to me you see the first thing I think that these disciples needed and I think we need it today if we're gonna untie our promise we need to have obedience but I believe our obedience is activated by faith by faith you see, if you, need, if you want the promise or the blessing in your life, you've got to walk in obedience. And I don't mean obedience in the sense that, if, it, that it, it's, if we look at it many times like obedience means I've got to do all these things for God to give me stuff. I don't, and that's what I'm saying today. I am saying this. There are some things in God I will not begin to understand until I walk in obedience and go and do as God has called me to do because the blessing and the promise is on the other side of the obedience. And I need faith to trust Him in the moment that he knows where I'm at and what I'm doing and I can step out in faith and as I step out in faith he is on the other side of that he is at work the illustration I've used many times and it's kind of funny but it's the it's Raiders of the Lost Ark sorry that or not it's Indiana Jones actually the last crusade okay Apostle Indiana Jones and he comes to a place where he has to step on the invisible bridge and all he sees is a chasm below him. But he has to step out believing that the bridge is going to be there. He can't just put his toe out there and touch it. It's as he steps out in obedience and does this thing that the bridge appears. And I believe many times in my life I have that picture because I believe it is by me walking in faith, not by sight, but by faith. I step out onto nothing. But as I step out, I'm really not stepping out onto nothing. I'm stepping out on the Word of God. I'm stepping out on what God has said. I'm stepping out in obedience. And my faith activates my obedience, which unties the blessing and the promises in my life. But I've got to step out in faith faith and say God even though it doesn't make sense I choose to walk by faith in this moment because you are going to be there with me through it amen when you look at the Bible, this is what the whole Bible is about because faith is currency in the kingdom of God. It is what I use in the kingdom of God to understand this is my currency. It took faith for Noah to build an ark when it had never rained like that before. It took faith for Abraham to say, come on fam, we're going and we're going somewhere and we don't know where we're going and by faith we're going to get there and you're going to ask me every single five minutes, where are we there yet? And I'm going to say, I don't know because I don't even know where we're going. That's faith. 
Thankfully, he didn't have Isaac and Ishmael yet. It would have really been faith if he had had two little boys back there trying to talk to him. It took faith for Moses to go to Pharaoh and to say, let my people go. It took faith for Rahab to welcome in these spies, not knowing what they were going to do. It took faith for the children of Israel to march around Jericho seven times. Can you imagine how goofy this looks? I'm just going to go walk in a circle for seven times, and maybe God will do something. But by faith, they trusted the word of God. It took faith for Esther to go into the king's chamber, not knowing what he was going to do to her, or how he was going to treat her, or her, for her to go before him and to say that my, my people are being destroyed. It took faith for Esther. It took faith for David to take a sling and some rocks, and to pick up those rocks, and to go after Goliath time and time and time again in the Bible we see people that operate by faith that by faith I can do what God has called me to do but I've got to step out in obedience but my obedience is only activated when I have the faith God has given me to know that God if you said it you're going to perform it and I'm going to step out on your word believing that you're that you're telling me what to do and I'm going to do that and because I step out in faith I am going to see God do the impossible in my life. Amen? You see, I believe we've got to be the kind of people that begin to trust God. I think this is, I know it sounds simple, but this is really where we, we misunderstand a lot of things. We miss it a lot of times. We have to trust that God sees things we don't see. All of a sudden, these disciples are going, and they don't know exactly. Now listen, let's be honest about the text this morning. Maybe Jesus had it all set up, and he didn't tell them. Okay? Maybe he was like, hey, just go over there, and um, get the donkey and I've already talked to the person ahead of time because here's what he says he says this if anybody stops you just tell them the master needs it the Lord needs it now once again I would be like Jesus could you be a little more specific there's a lot of lords a lot of masters are they gonna know it's you can you be more specific but Jesus I believe wanted them to understand something because here's what faith does faith not only activates our obedience but I believe faith helps us to know this that when I go somewhere I'm not going in my own strength but I'm going in Jesus name I am going in the power of the Holy Spirit and what Jesus wanted them to know was this I'm not trying to fix everything for you I need a donkey that's the promise I need it untied you go and you take care of it when you get there and somebody if they say to you why are you doing this just tell them the Lord needs it listen when you go today you're not going in your own strength and in your name all authority in heaven and earth has been given to you so we can go and we can make disciples we can lay hands on the sick and see them recover we can cast out devils we can do everything God has called us to do not in our own strength in our own power but we can do it knowing that God is with us I'm not doing it in my name name I am doing it in the name that is above every name I am stepping out in the name of Jesus and I am going in his authority and his power and because of that I know God is with me amen you've got to believe by faith that God is fighting your battles before you even get there you got to believe by faith that God is at work in this situation. And I believe in that moment these disciples had to trust by faith that what I need is what Jesus needs is on the other side of this rope, but it's going to take me faith to get there. It's going to take faith to go grab something and say, God has asked me to do this and it doesn't make sense, but I'm going to do it. And it takes faith that when you're asked, why are you doing this, to say, the Lord needs it and the person to be okay with that. That takes some faith. And listen, when you begin to to operate in the name of Jesus when you begin to say this is what God has asked me to do you recognize you're not doing it in your own strength and in your own power but you're doing it in the name of Jesus amen I believe the reason Jesus said that to them is because for all these years three and a half years he has been trying to train them and prepare them to walk by faith what does he tell them at one point you guys get in the boat and I will meet you on the other side they didn't realize that was a promise I will meet you on the other side. And they get in the middle of the water, and the winds start, and the, and the waves are going crazy, and a storm is there. And they wanted to give up and quit. They thought they were going to die. But you know what? They didn't realize they had a promise to hold on to. The promise was, I will see you on the other side. How many of you know if Jesus tells you he will see you on the other side? I don't care. Come hell or high water, you're going to make it to the other side. Amen? 
I don't care what happens around you. You're going to make it to the other side because Jesus has promised he will see you on the other side. And I believe that's what faith is involved. And Jesus had been trying to teach them, if you'll just trust me, take me at my word, trust me what I've said, step out in faith, then you will begin to see the impossible happen. And I believe in our life we've got to believe the same thing. God, if you're asking me to do this, it might sound crazy, it might sound ridiculous, but I'm going to do it. God, if you're you're calling me to do this, this is what you've asked me to do. It's going to be difficult at times, but I'm going to do it by faith, knowing that you are with me and you're going to see me through to the other side. Amen? I believe today when we begin to walk like that and live like that, it begins to change everything. And not only does faith help us to realize we're in Jesus' name, that, that my obedience matters, but number three, faith tells me that God is still at work even when I can't see it. God is still at work even when I can't see it. I love the triumphal entry for this reason, and it's probably different than most people, because it's not what they expected. Listen to this. This is Zechariah 9.9. Listen to this prophecy. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and having salvation. That sounds like good stuff. You know why? Because this is what they wanted. They wanted a natural king that would come and destroy Rome in that moment and set up a throne and that Jesus would reign and rule right then. And so in their mind, when they're saying Hosanna, you realize Hosanna means save now. They are literally saying, Hosanna, Jesus, save us now. Save us. Come and redeem us. Not, I don't, they don't mean salvation in the sense that we do. They meant come and take over Rome, destroy these guys that are here, and you set up a kingdom, and we will rule and reign with you right now. And then the next line throws a curveball and everything. Behold, here comes your king, lowly and riding on a donkey, the colt of a donkey. Listen, long before there was a man that rode a, a white horse and had a mask, the horse was known for its being, the, the stallion, the steed, is what kings rode into battle. I'm sorry, I'll, I'll give you another black and white show called Gunsmoke. Festus didn't ride into battle on a donkey. You understand that? That's not exactly this kingly animal. The kings ride the horses. It's the good guys on the white steeds, not a donkey. Can you imagine? Here comes our king. He's coming up over the hill. You're sitting there waiting. You think he's going to gallop into Jerusalem. And then all of a sudden, hee-haw, hee-haw. And you're thinking, I just laid down these branches for that. Because he didn't come like they thought. He's not coming up. I mean, this, and, and some of you have animals. We're in the country here, and we have people that have horses and donkeys. And maybe I'm wrong. I just know the ones I've been around are stubborn and hard-headed. They're like most of us, okay? But they're, they're not easy animals to deal with. It's not something that you look at and it's, 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 as kind as they are or whatever, and as fun maybe as they, be, they are to work with. I don't know. I'm just throwing that out there. Um, the truth is, that's not an animal that you think of of power and might. This is not the stallion and the steed. This is a donkey. Here comes your Savior, lowly, riding a donkey. Why in the world would Jesus do that? I believe this, because he wanted them to understand they were looking for an, a natural king. They were looking for something in the natural, and Jesus wanted them to know, I am, I'm going to save you, but it's not just in the natural. I am going to supernaturally save you. That you're worried about Rome now, I'm worried about your salvation for eternity. I'm worried about your soul being saved. You're worried about me coming in and taking over Rome. Listen, that's easy. I could do that in a moment. But I've got something deeper that needs to take place. And the way to, of Christ is not the way that, of the empire. It's not the way of Rome. It's the way of the cross. It's the way of going after him and realizing it is a life sometimes of pain and suffering. But it is a life of understanding the cross is the way to true salvation. Salvation doesn't come by earthly kings. Salvation comes by Jesus Christ, King of kings and Lord of lords, through the way of the cross. Amen. 
And so here are these people. They want him to come in with might and power. And Jesus said, no, I'm going to be the king that's humble. I'm going to be the king that rides the donkey. But you know what? I am going to really take care of the problem. The problem is not Rome. The problem is sin. And the problem is we need to get to the bottom of this. And I am the lamb slain before the foundations of the world. I am the perfect sacrifice. And I am going to the cross. And he throws them a curveball. And he says, you want it this way, but I'm going to show up this way. How many times have people quit serving God because he didn't show up the way they wanted him to? How many times have people given up on God because they thought God was going to come through this way and he didn't? And they thought, my promise has been tied up. And because my promise is tied up, God, you're never coming through. And God's saying, no, there's maybe other factors involved. Maybe it's the, maybe God, maybe the timing isn't right. Maybe God's waiting on a certain timing. Maybe it's us. Maybe in the sense that I'm not trying to blame us for everything that happens, but maybe at times I don't walk in obedience. Maybe I walk in unforgiveness toward a situation. Or I walk in a certain way that that hinders God from doing everything he needs to do. And sometimes the promise is tied up for various reasons. But I've got to trust that even when it doesn't make sense, God is still at work. Even whenever everything doesn't make sense, that my Savior comes. He doesn't show up the way I want him to all the time but listen to me do not miss this he might not show up the way you want him to but he does always show up he always shows up in his way in his time he has never failed us he has never been late to one appointment I know it seems like late but listen to me your watch is not what God works by he works by a different kind of watch because his ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts but we've got to trust him in the moment we've got to trust Trust him in the process that, God, I am going to walk by faith that if you want me to go grab a donkey, I don't understand it, but I'm going to go get it. If you want me to step out in faith and do that, I don't understand it, but I'm still going to go do it. And I believe as I walk in obedience that my promise is going to be untied. As I walk and trust you, the blessing you have for me is going to be on the other side of my obedience, and I'm going to see that thing untied in my life. Amen? Amen. I think many times in our life, the reason this is important is because two things. Number one, the reason I love that God uses donkeys is because God works through people and things that we wouldn't see coming. You don't know how many times in my life, I'm being honest with you today, I've judged somebody based on what they look like, how they act, their past, and God has used those people to speak into my life Time and time again. Because here's the thing. Whenever, whenever if, if, if Jesus showed up on the horse, everybody would expect it. Rome might have even bowed. But you know what? Jesus didn't need that in the the moment. If if that would have been the wrong way, he needed them to crucify him. You understand that? Like it had to go this way. And so he shows up on a donkey knowing what's going to happen, how it's going to work. And here's the thing. If he showed up many times and used the people we expect, then things would go way differently. But I'm so glad that God uses people that have a past. I'm so glad that God uses people that have a testimony. I'm so glad that God shows up and he still uses donkeys like you. You and I. He still uses people to say, you know what? I don't have to be the greatest. I don't have to be the one that's got everything going for me. I don't have all the degrees on the wall. I don't have all the wealth in the world. But I know one thing. My God is for me and not against me. And because he's for me, I can do everything he's called me to do. I know that God's working in my life and in my situation. And I might not be perfect, but I'm working toward knowing him in greater ways. I am laying down my life and I'm letting him mold me and shape me and because of that I am going after him I'm not going to quit I'm not going to give up and God says you know what that's the kind of person that I can use because here's the thing the horse would have got the glory if Jesus had rode in on a horse but when he rode in a donkey it wasn't about the animal it was about the king on the animal and if God shows up the way we think he is then we get the glory out of it we begin to think well it's something I did that made this happen And make no mistake, God will work in ways you can't imagine so that whenever he gets done, he is the one that will get the glory out of it. Amen. Will the worship team join me? I'm almost done. Some of you know my story and some of you don't. I'm not going to get into all of it today. But about eight years ago, 
I went through a very difficult time in my life where I lost a, a, a child, a wife, and my mom in eight weeks' time. And <clears throat> for three years, I held on to a promise. I was reading Job right after this happened one day, which is like my least favorite book of the Bible. <laughs> but I was reading Job, and I get to the end of it, and God tells Job, I am going to restore to you double everything you lost. And I felt like the Lord spoke to me and said, I will restore what you lost. For three years, I held on to that promise. For three years, that promise was tied up. For three years. I held on to the fact that I felt like God had promised me something he was going to come through. There's many nights of going to bed lonely, many nights of having to make decisions by myself, but believing, God, I don't know how, but you're going to come through. Here's the thing, when you're a pastor, none of us should go to the club to find a wife, but you really can't do that when you're a pastor. You understand that? Okay? <clears throat> and they don't have pastorsonly.com. I looked into it. Okay? I own that domain now. No, just kidding. Just kidding. I don't. I should. But there was a promise. God, I don't know how you're going to do it. There's a promise. God, I don't know how you're going to restore this. This is painful. There's a promise. And four and a half years ago, God brought my reward, Sarah, my wife, to me. And now we have two boys. And the promise is this, that there was a promise that was held up for three years. I believe it wasn't held up for any bad reasons. I believe it was that God was preparing my heart to be able to marry again. God was preparing me to be ready for all of that. God had his timing, but for three years, the promise was held up. But I had to trust him. That God, one of these days, when you tell me, you're going to help me to know this is it. And I'm going to run as fast as I can to untie my promise. I'm going to run as fast as I can to in obedience. Listen. Here's the thing about churches, and I don't mean this bad. I'm not interested in just hyping you up today and creating people that are full of hype to leave and leave here just hyped up. Because the truth is, life is not always easy and life is not always fun. But here's the kind of people we want to produce at Landmark Church, the kind of people like Job that can say, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. The kind of people like the three Hebrew boys that can say, you know what, I, even if he doesn't come through like we think he's going to come through, we're still not going to bow. Even if God doesn't do what we want Him to do, we're still not giving up. We're still not quitting. Because even though it doesn't make sense, we choose to trust that He knows something I don't know. Because He's God and I'm not. And so we're going to follow Him. In the pain, in the midst of all of this, we're not going to give up. Our promise is tied up. But we are going to eventually get to the place where it's untied. But until then, we're still going to praise Him. You realize the crowd that said Hosanna was the same crowd that said crucify Him a few days later. The same crowd that's saying, save us now. When he doesn't come through, now they say, kill him. Because he didn't do what we thought he should do. But listen to me. They should have been saying, Hosanna at the cross. Even greater than the day he walked in. Because he was giving his life as a ransom for many. He was saving them. Make no mistake. Listen to me. God is saving you. And it may not look like you think it's supposed to look. But if you will trust him in the moment, he is saving you. I promise. You've got to trust Him. Don't say Hosanna today and crucify Him tomorrow because He doesn't come through. You keep saying, Hosanna, save me. Because eventually, it's going to come through in ways you can't even expect. But it takes obedience that is activated by your faith. It takes you walking in obedience. But that only happens when you choose by faith to trust that God, I'm going to step out in the unknown and you're going to work. Would you stand to your feet? 
Hey everybody, thank you so much. We are so honored that you chose to join us today for this message. And our prayer is for you and your family that you would be uplifted and encouraged. If today you receive Christ or if you would like to give to the vision of Landmark Church, if you would go to our website, www.landmarkchurchok.com, there's more information there, how you can do all of that. And also if you have a prayer request, please let us know how we can be praying for you guys. We love you and hope you have a blessed time.